Okay. okay. Well, we got any, any oh, okay. So. <coughs> Oh, look at that. Yeah, so I was going to talk a little bit about the uh, using the different herbal substances for the chulin. Right, so you guys, oh, the audio is okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Working. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure you guys have already gone through so much about chulin and how it's functioning and so on. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how the Tibetan herbs are working and then how that's working in the context of the chulin. Um, so, yeah, maybe some of you are familiar with uh, Western herbal tradition or, um, or other traditions of herbal medicine. You can say Tibetan medicine has some unique aspects. Uh, one aspect is that the Tibetan plateau is extremely, you know, very, very high elevation. It's the highest place on the earth, right? And so with this high elevation, there's many very special medicine plants that grow in this unique kind of uh, alpine environment. So with that, there's this incredible wealth of, uh, you know, Tibetan herbal herbal tradition. Um, Bob, I remember you mentioned that you had asked the Dalai Lama one time what he thought would be the the ideal economy of Tibet. That's if, right. You know, if there was no, uh, you know, disturbances. Yeah. And and that he said, oh, the the Tibetan medicine and herbal tradition using their their ecological resources. Yeah. You know, he said it could be the Switzerland of Asia, yeah. like sanitariums and healings and things. Yeah, imagine. That was his vision, his, his dream. Right, so Tibet is this place that exudes this, you know, this healing energy. I mean, it's it's really, there's there's nowhere else like it that's that high elevation with that, you know, really unique richness of, of culture and so on. Um, so one aspect of the Tibetan herbal medicine is it has these incredible, unique, high elevation plants. Um, here we are, I mean, we're at what, 1,000 something feet? 1,600. We're at 1,600 feet elevation in the Catskills, so of course, you know, we can't access, you know, plants that grow 20,000 feet and so on, but, you know, of course, there are incredible uh, plants that we can find here in North America and European or commonly available Asian traditions as well. Um, and a lot of these plants we can use as also substitutes if we can't get this, you know, unique Tibetan one if it's threatened. Um, so another aspect of this Tibetan herbal medicine that's very unique and, and really special is the way that it combines medicines together. So, um, you know, in the contemporary medicine, we look at individual components. So say we look at ghee, right? Maybe we'll try to find one molecule in ghee, like ghee or something. There'll be some one thing you can take out of ghee. And they'll try to find, well, this is the thing that gives a function, right? And so we're looking all to break things down into smaller and smaller individual molecules and so on. But Tibetan medicine th sees things, um, you know, in this larger perspective of interdependence. You know, where one plant actually exists with so many kinds of qualities inside it. It has different tastes, different potencies. You know, it grows also with this interdependence of the land, of the, of the sun, the seasons, the other plants and animals, right? So it's, everything's part of an interconnected community. In the same way when we make the herbal formulas, we don't usually use a single herb, although we can sometimes, right? We can use a single substance, but more commonly we make these herbal combinations, right? So we'll mix these different herbs together. Um, it's like, for example, each one of us has our own personality, right? But this personality can exhibit so many different kinds of expressions, right? Maybe you with your child, you will act in a certain way. You with your parent, you'll act in a different way. You with your enemy, you'll act in a different way. It's still you, right? But with different other people, you'll have different, uh, you know, ways of being. And the same medicines are the same, yeah? You combine, you know, two different herbs and they bring out different aspects of each other. Right, so when you make this combination, it can really be greater than the sum of its parts. So, you know, many of these little Tibetan pills, you can have like 35 ingredients, 70 ingredients, and so on. If you try to break down all the individual chemicals inside it, there's, you know, some few micrograms of each. 
picogram, picogram, whatever, <laughs> right? Tiny little particles, but still this one pill with so many different compounds will affect you. And you can really, it's a tangible thing, right? So in that way, it's the power of this interdependent kind of community of different uh, medicines working together, right? So when we talk rejuvenation, you have to first understand a little bit this kind of background of how the herbs are functioning and so on. Um, right, and I mean, to study how Tibetan herbalism works is a huge study as well, right? There's, I mean, the main thing is we'll look at the taste, right? So each of the different tastes are composed of the different elements coming together, right? So in one aspect, you're eating some external substance, say it's food or medicine or whatnot, and you're actually consuming a combination of elemental properties, right? So that'll manifest as taste, and it'll also manifest as what we call a potency. So some herbs can be more warming, some can be more cooling, some can be more like uh, drying the body, some can be more like uh, nourishing the body, right? So there's many, many different types of potencies that can function in the medicines too. Um, so like that, I mean, it's a huge study. We can talk for seven days on very basic aspect of Tibetan herbal medicine. So I think maybe what's useful is to introduce some of the herbs that we're using um, and how they're functioning in the true land and so on. So, all right, first we have this uh, Shiche 6. So Shiche 6 is the large pill, right? Have you all been taking that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Large one? Yeah, the black the one. The toilet, yeah, everyone? Mm -hmm. We took two already. Two nights will come up. The black one. Yeah, so this is called the pacifier, mm -hmm. Shiche. Um, and this uh, Shiche, so typically, this is typical in the Tibetan herbal formulas, you'll have a name or a word and then a number, right? So Shiche 6 means the pacifier medicine with the six ingredients. We can have, you know, it could, that name could be the name of a plant too. It could be like a rhododendron 6. It's, you know, six ingredient medicine with rhododendron as the main ingredient, for example. Right? So like that. There's many of, you'll see this kind of name very commonly. So this Shiche 6, right, is a very common medicine um, as a general purgative, or a, like a, yeah, it's more like a, like a laxative and a soft purgative. So we have a six ingredients. The first one is this myrobalan fruit. So if you guys see on this uh, Medicine Buddha image up on the altar there, Medicine Buddha is holding this plant, right, in his right hand. Um, you can see here. Right. So this, uh, normally it looks more like uh, there's some fruits. Uh, maybe a hand up there. Fruit? Yeah, this one. So uh, this is a Tonka illustration, right, of Medicine Buddha holding this myrobalin plant with the, with the fruits on it. Um, is that Ambuah by any chance? So it's a uh, Harad. So there's three fruits, um, and there's three types of myrobalin. Um, in India they call Tripala, right? So one is Amala. Uh, uh, this one is a, uh, this is a uh, Haritaki or Harad, right? And this is the number one ingredient. I, I was doing some research trying to make some uh, kind of uh, putting all the different formulas from four tantras into my kind of database. And I, you can see how many, what is the most common ingredient used in the different ones. Aruda is coming up like one of the most frequently used medicines in four tantras. Oh, sure. In all the formulas, if you like make an analysis, it's one of like the most common. And if you know the taste of the arura, you taste Tibetan medicine, you'll recognize, <laughs> oftentimes you recognize that taste in the pills. Mm -hmm. So this arura is really incredible. Um, it's like a panacea. So this arura, it's, um, so one aspect, it's said to grow on the eastern mountain in the Medicine Buddha's Pure Land. And it's amazing because in India, um, there is a special mountain with the same name that is actually is a mountain full of forest of Aruda. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where is that? It's in Orissa. Orissa? Yeah. Um, near Orissa Jharkhand border. Hmm? And it's called Gundam Arden. And it, it still exists. Unfortunately, the logging and uh, mining companies are trying to invade. There's some tribal people living there. But they say it's one of the best quality of this Aruda is coming from that. So I, I found that out last year. I was really wanting to make a pilgrimage to visit that Did area. you bring Arura to here? Um, I can check. Maybe in my luggage I have a few. 
Yeah, actually, uh, Sri Shailam near Nagarjuna Kunda is yeah. part of the Eastern Ghats. Um, yeah. That mountain range is where this is coming from. Uh -huh. So they also have a lot of this. Uh, uh -huh. And also in Bhutan, yeah? Yeah, in Bhutan and pretty much all of North India too, it's growing. Um, it's a quite common tree. It grows in north or south? Um, actually, all over. So where I am, where I live in uh, kind of southwestern India, if you go into the forest, you can find this Arura tree is growing wild. Really? Yeah, and many the Chinese tie, name for Arura? They call it the Hudzu. Hudzu. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, but so I think in Chinese medicine, Jing, it's, Jing, uh, Jing. Yeah, it's not the most common substance. Um, if you look in the Chinese uh, Bensao, like the Materia Medica text, it was added later, after China started trading with India. Then they started using this, and probably also making China trading with Tibet as well. Then they started using this more in these kind of later material medical texts. Um, so in the Root Tantra, it talks about how, and this eastern mountain, uh, you know, in the Medicine Buddha's land, is this forest of the Aruda. And on this, it, these plants, they're having every, it's really like a panacea. They have all the six flavors and all of the 17 potencies, or qualities, and eight potencies. Like, it's really, this a medicine that can do everything. It can cure, like, all types of disease. Um, so that's a really unique thing about the Aruda. So magic fruit. Yeah. You can call it the magic it's fruit. It's really a magic fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, many people, they talk about this uh, adaptogens, right? It's kind of a trendy word for, they say, oh, you know, you drink a mint tea, mint tea is adaptogen. I mean, it can do anything. But I think that's kind of lazy, lazy herbalism. Really, there's not many plants that really have the quality to kind of do all possible things. But I think Aruda is like a true adaptogen. Sure. Yeah. So Aruda it's called the, the king of medicine yeah, in Tibet. Yeah, yeah. Menja. So the king of the medicine. Is that, and that's an A R U D A. A R U R A. Aruda. Aruda. So um. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got three fruits like that. Only. No, um, when you see it growing wild, um, I I can find some other photos in my archive somewhere. Um, it, it's a tree, so it'll be growing. You know, it grows more on the you know throughout the branches and their spurs. But it's common in the iconography to show it growing. Oh. Um, Is this that mine? Oh, I thought that that Question. No, it's typically three Aruda. This is uh, three fruits. It's talking uh, Dharma, uh, wealth, mm -hmm. and happiness. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that, that's medicine Buddha's uh, right, right, blessing okay. result. Right, right. Chernobyl Deva. Chernobyl Deva. Chernobyl Deva. Yes. That's another name. This and wealth and reality uh, of teaching. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so that's the first, first, if you know one Tibetan plant, you know Arura, right? The medicine Buddhist plant. And, um, so that's another name for the Mylobalan? Yeah, so Mylobalan is a Western name. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, kind of the common Western name. And uh, Arura is the Tibetan name. It's, uh, if you want to find it here, it's more commonly available under its Indian names, just because there's many Indian grocers, it's a large exporter. Um, let me just write this one. 